friends, welcome back. <clears throat> I brought another book today about turtles, since we are learning about reptiles, and turtles are, another, are a kind of reptile. And we did one fiction book called Yertle the Turtle. I hope you enjoyed that one. If you haven't watched that one, you can watch that one too. And I also brought a non-fiction book, and this one is called Turtle Crossing. So this is a true fact book about turtles, and it is by Rick... Krustowski. Rick Krustowski is his name. Let's look at the title page. Here it is. It says Turtle Crossing by Rick Krustowski. All right. When the first spring rain trickles through the soil, a baby painted turtle comes to life in an underground nest. She claws her way up through the mud and tangled roots and out of the darkness and into the dazzling light. So most reptiles will lay their eggs under the ground in some kind of hole in uh, either dirt or sand. Um, they'll dig a hole and then lay their eggs there. And then when the eggs are ready to hatch, that is what happens. Soon her brothers and sisters scramble out of the nest and begin the march to find water. The little female leads them through a field and stops in the tall grass at the edge of the road. She stretches her neck and sniffs the air. The scent of water is strong and in a burst of energy, she skitters across the pavement, slides down a sandy bank and plops into the cool green water of a pond. She's safe. Oh, I'm glad she made it into the pond. The turtle is just the size of a quarter. So a quarter is one of those big silver coins. I would say a quarter is about like that size. So this turtle is just about that size, about the size of a quarter. Her shell is soft and doesn't protect her yet. She spends the summer alone, hiding in the shadows near the watery edge. Chomp, chomp, her jaws clamp shut on a wriggling beetle larva. Gulp, the underwater turtle is quick and graceful. She is a deadly predator to the minnows, which are little small fish, and tadpoles. We just learned about what frogs do, how they start out as tadpoles and turn into a frog. So tadpoles are baby frogs. And water bugs that she chases down. So they're all, those are all kinds of food that this baby pond turtle will eat. The pond is also home to other predators. An ancient snapping turtle prowls the murky water. His shell is bigger than a bicycle helmet. His crushing jaws gobble any animal that crosses his path. Luckily, he never notices the little turtle as she darts under the leaves. The snapper is hunting larger prey, so bigger animals, bigger than what she is. The painted turtle peeks out of her shell just in time to see this monstrous reptile block out the sun before he disappears into the deep water. This snapping turtle, there's one of those at the UT Turtle Pond. I've seen one of those before, and maybe you have too. Summer turns to fall. The sunlight is not as warm, and the days are shorter. One morning, a thin layer of ice covers the pond, and at the end of October, the turtle takes a last breath of air and then paddles to the bottom and burrows into the soft mud. The numbing cold slows her body down. She doesn't need to eat or breathe. Her heart beats once every 10 minutes. She has just enough oxygen from the water to seep through her skin and keep her alive through the long winter months. So maybe some of you know what this is called when an animal sleeps in the winter. You probably know it. It starts with that's right, hibernation. So this turtle is hibernating. <clears throat> Finally, in March, sunlight filters through the ice and dances across the bottom of the pond. 
The turtle stretches out one foot across the mud and then pulls her body free. Now she floats to the surface, gulping fresh air into her lungs for the first time in almost six months. That's a long time. Before she can eat, the turtle needs to warm up. She finds the perfect spot to perch and soak up some rays on top of the shell of one of her neighbors. You see that? And you've probably seen that if you've seen turtles at Ladybird Lake or the UT Turtle Pond. You'll see how the turtles like to sometimes lay right on top of each other and soak up the sun. That's very important for them to soak up a lot of sun and get warm. The turtle spends summer days basking in the sun and in the fall, she gets ready for, for winter. And in the spring, it is time to grow strong again. Each year, a new ridge forms around her shell. And when she is five years old, her shell is so tough that few predators can harm her. So it starts out soft, and as she gets older, it gets harder and harder. And by the time she's five, it's hard enough that other animals would have a hard time eating her. At this stage in her life, the turtle feels an urge even stronger than survival. A male turtle feels it too. He swims close enough to touch her, and at last she notices him. You know what they're going to do? Let's find out. The turtles chase each other through the winding stems of water lilies. The male glides ahead, and then he spins around to face the female. Okay. Another word for a male would be a boy. You got it. And a female is the science word for a girl. He touches his nose to her nose and flutters his long curved claws across her cheeks. And when she touches his feet with her claws, they sink to the bottom to mate. And when they mate, that means the girl turtle can lay some eggs, the female. A month later in June, the female turtle hauls her heavy body out of the water to look for a place to dig a nest. The perfect spot lies on the other side of the road. It's the same field where she was born. Her belly scrapes against the pavement as she makes her way across the road. Cars zip back and forth, but she reaches the other side safely. And at the top of the hill, the tutor turtle scoops dirt away with her hind feet and then she tips the back end of her shell into the hole and lays five leathery eggs. There she is laying her eggs. Looks like she's got three down here and one more that makes four. She's going to lay one more to make five. As the last one drops in, she buries her nest and tamps it down with her belly to hide it from hungry skunks and raccoons who would want to eat her eggs. After a rest, the turtle heads home at dawn. The tall grass at the edge of the road is a safe place to scan for dangers. She stretches her neck, sniffs the air, and begins to cross the pavement. Two lights pierce through the horizon like a pair of predator's eyes. Can you see what it is? It's a car coming down the road. She better be careful. The turtle is slow on land and she is no match for a fast moving car. So she can't get across fast enough. Do you know what she'll do? <gasps> she can go in her shell, right? That's what shells are for. They're to keep the turtle safe. So she has her one defense. She stops in her tracks and pulls her head, tail, and legs deep into her shell. The lights grow brighter as the car speeds closer, and just when its shadow reaches the turtle, the car stops. The doors open and the people step out. What are they gonna do? While his mother watches for traffic, a boy picks up the turtle. He carries her across the road and sets her down on the side she was heading toward. 
The turtle stays inside her shell, but when she sees the water, she pops her head and legs out and rushes into the pond. Oh, what a kind boy. He helped her. He put her back in her home where she can be safe. So other cars won't have a chance to come by and she won't have to hide in her shell because she'll be back in her home. When the turtle comes to the surface again, the car is gone. As quickly as they entered her life, the people disappeared. Her eggs are safely hidden in the field across the road, and now she is safe too in her home in the pond. The turtle climbs onto the log and stretches her neck and legs. Sunlight seeps into her shell and warms her striped skin. From the tip of her nose to the toes on her webbed feet, her, in spring, her babies will claw their way out of the earth, and she might never even see those babies. But some of them will make it across the road like she did to hide in the cattails until they're large enough to leave the pond and lay eggs of their own. And what is that called when the babies grow up and make more eggs and those eggs hatch and legs and grow up and lay their eggs and then those eggs hatch. Remember what that's called? It's called a life cycle. So we just read about the turtle's life cycle. So turtles aren't the only reptiles and I wanted to show you this poster right here that has some other reptiles on it. So it has a chameleon right up here and this is a box turtle and a gecko and an alligator. You know this. Snake. This is a copperhead snake. This one is a regal horned lizard and a Gila monster and a Komodo dragon, which is a kind of lizard. It has a dragon word, but dragons aren't actually a real animal, but this, this one's just called a Komodo dragon. And a painted turtle, which is what we just read about. And another snake, this one's called a green snake. You might know this lizard, iguana. And then this one is a crocodile. So these are all different kinds of reptiles. And what do reptiles have in, in common? Well, we have, in our body, we have blood, right? And our blood is warm. We have warm blood. But reptiles do not have warm blood. They have cold blood. So that is why it is very important for them to spend a lot of time in the sun and to soak up sun. So just like when we do Lizzie Lizard, ooh, and the lizard is laying in the sun. And we just read a lot about how the turtles like to lay in the sun too. That is because they need to get a lot of sun to keep them warm. So that they're because they are cold blooded. So they soak up the sun and store it up so that they can try to stay warm. Okay, another thing about reptiles, they are usually covered with scales or bony plates, like turtles have bony plates, and lizards and snakes have scales, right? They lay eggs. So all these reptiles here are egg layers. They lay eggs, and we just read about the turtle and how the turtle lays eggs. They also use their lungs to breathe. Remember in part of the story when the painted turtle went down into the water to hibernate? She had to take her last breath and it had to last her. And then she also gets a little bit of oxygen, some air from the water over time. But that had to last her for six months. So sometimes they can go under the water for a long time, but they really do need air. Um, so at some point they have to come up to get some air. So when that hibernation was over, that painted turtle came up to get some air. And then uh, they can live on land or in the water. Right? Can you see some that live in the water, like an alligator or a crocodile can live in the water. Even some snakes are water snakes. They live in the water. Turtles can live in the water. And then lots of these are land animals. Lots of lizards will live on the land. Um, chameleons live on the land. And we're going to read more about chameleons this week. I've got some great books about chameleons. And I hope that you enjoyed learning about the reptiles, and I think it would be really fun if you wanted to act out 
what it was like to be a turtle and what the turtle's life cycle is. Think about how it started with the baby, with the eggs under the ground. The mama had to um, dig a hole and then lay some eggs in there. And then those eggs came out and mama wasn't there. They hatch and they have to find the water, whether they're a sea turtle or a pond turtle, they have to get to the water because that's where a lot of their food is that they're going to eat. So they get to the water and then they get bigger and bigger. Hopefully nothing eats them and they grow up to be full size. They said by five years their shell is strong enough that other animals aren't going to be able to eat them. And then they're going to eventually get ready to mate and lay, if it's a girl turtle she'll lay some more eggs and start that life cycle all over again. So that will be really fun if you want to act that, that life cycle out. All right, my friends, well, it was so great to see you, and I will see you soon. Bye.